For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. Well, I, I won't say it, it won't ever happen because we don't know what we don't know, right? We, we can't say uh, something is 100% impossible because uh, we're often surprised. I can say that with uh, decades of super bright minds working on all different kinds of computation, um, biological computers, uh, silicon computers, you know, quantum, we do not see something that looks like uh, conscious experience or emotional experience happening. And so we don't see a path to building it. It doesn't, it's not something that's just gonna go poof, here it is with this much faster of a machine or this many more uh, transistors or something, right? It's okay. not well, about the parameters we know. Okay, well, what's your take on that, Nick? Do you, do you think there could be a, a consciousness at some point from an AI? Yeah, I mean, it's not completely obvious whether current AI systems say Alpha Zero would, I mean, how sure were, were that they are not conscious in whatever sense, maybe insects are conscious, uh, maybe some small animal, if, if the capabilities, the learning abilities and so forth, the behavioral repertoire starts to become comparable to animals where a lot of humans would at least not feel confident that there is not even a glimmer of consciousness, then it seems our confidence that these AI systems do not have similar kind of internal life starts to seem a bit shaky. Um, and certainly as we're you know, like moving, you know, over the coming years towards like things that maybe become more mouse like, let's just say, most of us would probably think mice have the ability to experience uh, pain and to suffer, or to be hungry and to have other mental states. Um, um, and combining that with our lack of like a really solid uh, account of necessary and sufficient conditions for conscious experience. It, it seems like um, at least the uncertainty would spill over into hypotheses where some of these systems will have some degree of consciousness long before you reach kind of human level capabilities. Um, and certainly I think it is possible in principle to have say a digital computational system that, that would be fully conscious. Um, in fact, I think indistinguishable from the kind of consciousness that we humans have. How, how how would you know i suppose is my question nick because inevitably you know we could we can probably develop fairly soon and maybe we already are you know algorithms and technologies that pass the turing test where you you would talk to it and you wouldn't know you were talking to a, a computer but as far as i'm aware it's still just a set of algorithms it's ones and zeros it doesn't mean anything to the machine how would you ever know it's a kind of like the zombie problem isn't it how would you ever know that you really are talking to a conscious being and not just an incredibly clever set of algorithms i mean you could kind of ask the same when you're talking to uh, like rosalind or me how you can know that we really are conscious and are not just like cleverly mimicking the th types of behavior that the conscious being would exhibit um and it seems broadly speaking we might point to two types of criteria so what is um what functionally uh, are we capable of doing? Like if, if we can like respond intelligently to your questions and react to your actions and so forth, that would seem to point uh, to the presence of a mind. And I don't think it's really the case that we right now have the ability to pass the Turing test. Well, we have to be careful what we mean by it. There are sort of crummy versions of it that you could pass by by means of cheap hacks. So if you have some naive judges who don't know like the, the real questions to ask, they will all ask the same kind of questions. Uh, and like in the limiting case, you could just imagine kind of having hard coded answers to the most commonly asked questions. And then probably you could trick some people for two minutes in, in an interview quite easily. And you could do a little bit better than that with current kind of big language models and so forth. But like actually doing like a half hour interrogation with people who know how to kind of probe that's way beyond current capabilities. Um, but anyway, so those kind of um, functional capability related um, criteria would be one basis. Like another you might try to point to is the internal architecture. Some people might think it's not enough to replicate the input output functionality of, of, of say a human for it to have the same mental experience. The internal organization would also have to be sufficiently similar. Um, 
and there, of course, then the question arises at, at what level of similarity? Uh, is it sufficient if you have, say, implemented yes. in silicon the same kind of computational processes or, or do you need some lower level isomorphism as well? Um, yeah. But you could have both the same computational structure in principle in a digital computer and the same input output behavior. And I think that would ground a very strong claim to having the same so, kind of so, conscious experience. So why, Ros, are you, why, Ros, are you more skeptical? Why are you more skeptical of all of this, Rose? Well, well, there's functional similarity, okay, where something acts like something and where we uh, give it a bunch of specifications and say, if it does these things, then, you know, it, it jumps over this hoop and we label it something like we label it consciousness level 0 0.2 or something. And we can, we can do that anytime. The more specifically we define the functions, the more likely we are to get the computer to be able to succeed at them in a constrained environment. We're, we're very good if we can specify all possible things that it should do or behave or patterns of them uh, within a space of programming the computer to do things like that. I have ideas how to program it so that it will look conscious and uh, you, you know take a list of functions of consciousness and make it look that way. Uh, but am I deceived that it actually is? No, it's just looking like it is. And there is a difference. Uh, it may not be a functional difference in an interaction. Uh, there are times, you know, when you call for help for a service on your computer or something, and the person's just going through a list. I'm like, oh my gosh, my, you know, you're more like a computer than my computer is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? There are times when we just act according yeah. to this set of procedures, but we know uh, that we have more to us than that, right? We know that we can be motivated by love, that we can be motivated by uh, feelings and experiences that transcend these functional approximations that, that I program. And I know that because I program them. And I also know that if I didn't program them, that machine wouldn't act that way. It doesn't care. <laughs>